Hello, you wonderful people. And welcome to another episode of Watchlist. Basically, think of this as a monthly TV guide for me to let you know what and when TV shows that I'm interested in, maybe you're interested in, are coming out. Like always, in the description down below, I'll include any links to any trailers that might be available about anything that'll bring up during this watch list. First up, on October 4th on NBC, we have the seventh season of The Blacklist premiere, which I'm very excited. Obviously, there was a lot of crazy stuff that went down last season. Obviously, I don't want to get too much into spoilers, especially like the last shot of season six is kind of like Red finds himself in a very interesting situation with an interesting character and I was like I wasn't expecting that okay so what does this mean there, obviously like I'm like there was a lot of fallout in season six in many different regards that I'm curious like is there going to be any pulling back certain strands like with certain characters that might have been on the run you, you get what I'm trying to allude to. I, I, I'm curious to see where everyone's story goes because like, like I said, just so much stuff went down and what it means on a much grander national like scale like of everything that went down. You know, what the blacklist is going to look like going forward. I'm sure it would be the same, but maybe there will be some adjustments. The big thing too is Liz. Liz is going through a huge arc where she started at the end of season five and what that meant for her at the beginning of season six to where she is now, especially what her relationship is like with Red. Uh, you know, so there's a lot to kind of, you know, like where her story is going to take her. Like, you know, we see where she's, how she's feeling now and everything about everything. But like I said, it's just, it's just an incredible art that I've seen. And so I'm curious, like, what's the next step for her and Red's relationship? I mean, she's stepping more into the field of being a mother again because she was separated from her child for so long so that's another element that has to be added on to all of this as well so there's so much i'm excited to see what they do with season seven also on october 4th we had a new series premiering on a netflix called raising dion um it's, i was looking into it but it's a tv show that is based on a comic book and a short film of the same name i, I believe uh, but, but essentially, it's about this little boy whose father is away because of, I think, military stuff or whatever it is. But he starts developing powers. And it basically, it's his mom's attempt to, you know, try to, you know, I guess with a friend or associate or whatever, trying to help get Dion's powers under control. Obviously, it's almost got like this X-Men thing of like... Well, not just X-Men thing, just a kind of thing you would expect kind of in this genre of things of like, try to keep him away from the government because the government's going to experiment on him. So I think it's going to be a thing of like, who can we trust, who we can't trust. Like, I mean, and it's actually kind of interesting when you look at the trailer and see like all the different range of abilities of what he's capable of. I've never read the comic book nor seen the short film. So this will be my first time experiencing the story. So I'm very excited to kind of ultimately see what it is. Next up on October 6th on the CW, we have the series premiere of Batwoman, which I am very excited about. If, you've, if you're unaware of what it is, it's basically in Gotham, uh, Batman slash Bruce Wayne has been going for three years and stuff is really kind of falling apart in Gotham. His cousin, Kate Kane, ends up taking up the mantle, well, taking up a Bat mantle and become Batwoman to kind of fill that void. And obviously this is something we got introduced to, you know, we got introduced to Kate slash Batwoman in uh, the Arrowverse crossover of Elseworlds last year. So I'm, I'm really interested to kind of dive into this, obviously see the type of villains. We get a little bit of a look of in the trailer to kind of see, you know, obviously like some of the characters we'll see is an ex of hers. Um, th that whole situation is obviously every, as well as everything with her dad too. Like it's going to be interesting seeing her kind of step into this vigilante role. Also probably eventually understanding where did Bruce go? Because the thing that I think she brought up in Elseworlds was just because it became too much for Bruce and he just kind of bailed. Like, you know, it's just probably like the thing of like, you try, you try, you try for so long, but it's like Batman wasn't a permanent solution. It was just kind of a band-aid to what is essentially Gotham being a gaping wound, I guess is kind of like, I potentially kind of think of it. So I think it'd be interesting to kind of dive into that. I also talked about this and other stuff about like, there's a lot of interesting things about the Kane and Wayne family that I didn't know about that I'm curious to see if the show ends up tackling because I think that'd be pretty dope. But I'm really get, I'm really really excited to kind of get to really know Batwoman because she's a character I know nothing about except for like the little bits that 
people have told me in a tiny, tiny bit I might have read up, but that's about it. So I'm really interested to kind of dive into this show. Also on the same night, also on the CW, we have the fifth season of Supergirl premiering. Super excited about this. A lot of crazy stuff went down in season four, and, you know, and, and I'm very interested to dive into this season to kind of see where things kind of went. Because obviously last season was very like humans versus aliens, and I'm curious, is there still some of that animosity still transferred over this season? Um, maybe, maybe not. We'll kind of have to wait and see in that regard. But obviously, like, there was a big revelations, and obviously, like, it's going to have a huge impact on Lena and, uh, you know, Kara's relationship. So I'm really curious to see how that staff There's not a lot I know about this season, so I'm very, very excited. I think the, the um, Lena and Kara thing is the thing I'm looking most forward to, just because it's, like, it's honestly been a long time coming, because it was, like, always a... a it was eventually going to happen at some point, so here we go to kind of see, like, the fallout of this whole situation. So I'm very, very interested to see what Supergirl has in store for us this season. Also, on that same night, we also have the season 10 premiere of The Walking Dead. Now, last season, which, I mean, it's not that strange for The Walking Dead, last season ended on a pretty big, hopeful kind of point at the end but it also ended literally like the second to last episode of the season was like a major bummer so it's like to kind of be more on the upswing at the end and just what this means obviously like the communities have you know bridged that gap that had broken up you know in a time skip and everything so obviously they're dealing with the whisperers like obviously they're going to be a much much bigger threat going forward and what this means for everybody because as you can see from the trailers like certain relationships have changed which i'm like how did how did that happen what happened here but i mean, I mean to be fair there's a lot of stuff that went down last season where you're like i can understand why certain relationships might fall apart just because that puts a heavy toll on your relationship to kind of deal with that uh so i'm interested to kind of see where this season takes us. on october 8th on the cw we have the sixth season of the flash so excited i really am going into this season kind of knowing next to nothing like because i am not well versed in dc comics stuff that was introduced in a trailer i'm like what does that mean i think i know what that means but still like obviously a little bit of the you know team flash dynamic has changed there's you know obviously like there's still the whole thing of like what went down last season nora's story that you know it's still dealing with like the aftermath I, I'm so curious, obviously, who, to really understand who our new villain is. I mean, we got a little bit of insight to this character of, like, why they're doing what they're doing. Because it's like, they're here, in the, it's kind of a thing of, I'm here trying to save the world in my own way. So, or trying to save lives in my own way. So, it's going to be interesting to see that clashing with, you know, Team Flash. Because it's like, oh, Team Flash is heroes, but they're more so a cancer. And you have to cut away the cancer to fully cure somebody. So, you know, so that's definitely going to be an interesting thing to kind of dive into. On October 9th on the CW, we have the season four premiere of Riverdale. There is a lot of stuff that went down last season. And obviously season three ended off on a big thing of like, okay, so what does this moment mean for our like main heroes? That being Archie, Jughead, Veronica, and Betty. Obviously, like, you know, they're, uh, they went through a lot last season. And obviously it's something I've talked about. Season four's premiere is going to deal with kind of like, you know, not just like on screen, but obviously off screen, a pretty big thing that happened, you know, so um, I'm curious to see, you know, like I said, I have my thoughts about how they'll probably tackle it, but also, you know, where the story is going to take us, like a lot of stuff had some big shakeups, especially in Veronica's family, that's just kind of the big, like, or everything with Hiram and Hermione, like, or, her story it's like mm, things that look too good at the end there so but it's that thing of like hey things are a little hopeful we'll be together and then like i said the final shot of season three is like no nah, things aren't going to look good and like but obviously that was a little bit of a time skip so like what leads us into that moment Still a lot of stuff that was left unanswered in season three that i'm curious like them circling back to you know so also on uh, that same day, or also on the CW, we have the series premiere of Nancy Drew. Now, Nancy Drew isn't something I'm that familiar with. I know a little bit just because I've done my own little research here and there, but I've never read the books. I don't think I've ever watched any adaptations, whether it be movies or anything, but I'm slightly from. It's kind of like a, a sleuth show. So it's obviously going to be really, I'm really interested to look into this because obviously, uh, 
I read something in a synopsis that was kind of interesting to me. It says former teen detective, which I was like, I guess because my brain, just because it's the CW and everything, I was like, are they in high school? I assumed they were, but I guess this is them in like, maybe like their late teens out of like high school, college age, and maybe early 20s. Um, but the fact is they say former teen detective, I guess it's like, because obviously the sheriff at the beginning is like, oh, I know exactly who you are, Nancy Drew. So it's like her detective days have already come and gone, which I think is kind of an interesting time period rather than being like, oh, this is her at the height of her detective thing. It's like, no, this is her. She kind of gave it up. I mean, that'd be interesting to kind of dive into why did she give it up, you know? But basically a murder, uh, Nancy finds herself in the middle of a murder along with a whole bunch of other people, some people she, she considers friends. And it's obviously got a very like Riverdale feel. I'd also talked about this in the past. Apparently it's supposed to have a supernatural twist to it but the question is like well is it like a scooby-doo supernatural twist where in some regards it might be like oh that's legitimate but more often than not it's like there's some smoke and mirrors to it i don't know i'm very interested to kind of you know dive into next up on october 10th we have the 15th and final season of supernatural premiering which even that's now just it still saying it sounds weird and just crazy to me it's like supernatural coming to an end it just doesn't seem real um but you know as someone who's been in love with this show for a long time it's i'm so excited you know you know both sad yet excited to see how they end up wrapping up the show especially season 14 had some pretty pretty big developments especially in the god department so it's like Dude, it's all, all at war. This is legitimately, I think, the... I mean, the Winchesters have had big battles in the past, but it's like this might just be the biggest of big battles because this will be the end-all, be-all of battles. And obviously, it seems like it's got them facing off against some familiar faces because it's kind of like everything ghost-wise that they've ever faced, every soul, every bad person that's probably potentially ever existed in this universe, soul-wise kind of got released so I actually saw something interesting about where our potential main antagonist could be like maybe not who they claim to be I didn't click on the video because I was like oh that's kind of interesting I didn't even cross my mind to think this person might not be who they claim to be so uh, but a, a thing is too like you know this being the fi the final season we're going to see a whole bunch of like appearances from like you know uh characters that might be might have been going for a long time there to come back you know, certain, you know, uh, what, what, hmm, crossroad demons, you know, once former kings of, you know, which is something I don't, that was never tackled last season either, like, what's, he, what's the state of hell like now, with everything being what it is, you know, but regardless, there's just, there's so much going into this final season that I'm so curious, because even the trailer I saw, it's like the most minimum amount, you, you really don't know what to really expect, except the boys are getting ready for this battle, you know, I'm, I'm saying the Winchester, but obviously that counts Cass in as well, but any hunter, because this is, this is, this is the world, this is, once again, kind of saving the world, end all, be all. And the big question is, when it's all said and done, are the Winchesters walking away from this alive? I mean, they've died a couple of times and come back, but this might be the moment. Well, that's actually been a thing before of like, oh, no more freebies coming back to life for you. That's been a whole thing in itself. So who knows? I'm so excited to see how this show ends up playing out. So, you know, it's finale. Also on that same night, also on the CW, we have the second season of Legacies. So, so excited. If you've not watched Legacies, I highly recommend you do it. I mean, you can literally watch it. It's on Netflix all of season one. But I'm so excited because what Legacies has done for the Vampire Diaries universe is so good. I saw like a, I, I've not watched a trailer for it. I just saw like a commercial on the CW about um, some stuff from season two. I was like, oh my God, some Landon stuff and what that means pertaining to hope and everything. Because it's, cause obviously like with the way season one ended, it's like everyone's just kind of moving on thinking everything's okay. It's all been dealt with, but it's like, no, like, but it, there's a lingering feeling, especially when it comes to Landon, I think, because he's the closest to Hope. Like, it, there's some lingering residual stuff there. So I'm interested to see how he, what ends up, you know, happening because it seems like dynamics and relationships are potentially going to change. And then there's a the whole, like, because the uh, promotion material I saw was kind of a big thing was, like, the whole Josie and Lizzie thing because that's obviously a big thing to kind of think about because obviously they found out kind of what, their fate slash destiny is because of the whole Gemini, you know, being a part of the Gemini Cup. That was sort of the biggest focus, which that's just a small part, I'm sure, of who knows what else is in store. Because it's like, currently standing, there is no, well, 
I was about to say currently standing there's no main antagonist, but that's not 100% true. I'm so, so excited for season two. On October 11th on the CW, we have season two premiering of Charm. So excited about this because I'm going, you know, as someone, once again, who loves the original show, I, I might be in a minority in this situation, but I love this reboot. I was so madly in love with season one. It just, just like some of the similar things that they did to the original show, but also kind of remixing and kind of doing their own thing. It's, it's so, it's so much fun. I feel like for me personally, I'm like, there's a lot of heart to it. And just like, I've easily fallen in love with our, you know, our trio, our, quad heroes because i've obviously got to include harry as well but i'm so curious because i've talked i made videos talking about like where everyone's relationship status is going to go because you know well where things have left off for mel maggie's complicated situation macy's pretty complicated relationship situation also like what season one's finale means for macy would there be any like ramifications for doing what she did and that's kind of been a big thing i'm like there were some big changes like world-wise on multiple occasions and I'm like that type of thing there there has to be some cosmic balance to that so I'm like that has to be something they introduce in season two I don't know I'm not even sure like because I wouldn't even know where to start to even you know because I thought like you know there's plenty of other like demons and other supernatural things out there in the universe for them to fight sure but it's like I wouldn't even know where to begin to really label like a next big villain in that regard I mean, you know, because the source situation is kind of dealt with, but I mean, that doesn't mean that can never circle back. I mean, even in the original show, the source was a thing that obviously like circled back in many different regards. So I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to see where the show ends up taking us this season. I, I, I cannot wait. On August 15th, we have the eighth and final season of Arrow premiering. This is kind of like, I'm probably one of the things probably on this list I'm the most excited about. Because, you know, like it's it's been a long road, you know? And it's kind of crazy to think that it it started with Arrow, you know, the Arrowverse, you know, started with Arrow. Obviously, you can make, I mean, so obviously it started with Smallville, but you get what I'm trying to say. But I think that after all this time, it comes to an end. Obviously, this is also tying into the crisis thing, because we know that it's out there, Oliver, his fate is to die, but it's like, once again, it's everything set in stone, uh, you know, and, and it's not even just about the ending, it's about the journey along the way. That trailer I saw was so much goodness of like familiar faces, which I'm kind of bundled myself because I completely forgot to talk about the fact is we got Katana back. We haven't seen Katana since like season four, I think. Because like, obviously her main season was season three, but I think she made a one-off episode appearance in season four. If I remember correctly, I could be 100% wrong. But so it's been a while. Other returning characters like Thea, I, I know I'm spoiling stuff, but it's like, come on, it's the final season of Arrow. You got to go a little nuts about it. And I, obviously I, I've talked about it before. I'm bummed that it's literally only going to be 10 episodes, but it seems like this is probably going to be a very filled 10 episodes because as we can see there's stuff from the future there's stuff from the present day it's like what is going to go down exactly in this season i have no idea obviously it's going to have something to do with like the league of assassins slash shadows because obviously like you know we see uh nissa we see um talia uh you know because obviously like i said we saw thea and we know where thea was in the last you know scheme of things so i'm so interested to see where all of this takes us in their own, obviously, where this all means going forward with like the crisis situation. I'm very excited because I think this final season is gonna be nuts. Also on that same night on USA Network, we have the Treadstone series premiere. This is a very interesting series. Basically, it's a series that takes place in the Bourne universe. I, you know, obviously, the Bourne identity, uh, supremacy, ultimatum. I think that's the movies, obviously, there's they're the only ones I've actually seen. I know there was the one with Jeremy Renner. Or Jeremy Renner, I never saw. And then there was the the fifth one, just called Jason Bourne. I never saw either. So, but basically, it seems like we're following three different characters who are basically part of like that same uh, the tread because I think that's the name of the program, Treadstone, that made Jason Bourne of like made you into like this assassin killer. There's like three different people, and it seems like it's a type of show where it's like taking place not just in one place, like three different people in three different locations, kind of around the world. So I think that's going to be really interesting. I mean, it, it, it makes sense because it's a very like international like government program so it kind of makes sense in that grand scheme of things but i'm very excited to kind of see i haven't read too much on it i've seen a tiny bit here and there but it seems like a very like you know maybe like kind of a little suspense thriller-ish but you know very action-packed 
kind of, well, basically a spy thriller, you know? So I'm really interested to kind of dive into this because I'm sure they're going to kind of dive into a lot more of the, uh, the world of Jason Bourne, which I'm, I'm kind of curious. I probably want to, I'm probably going to rewatch uh, the three first, well, I'll probably watch all the movies, but rewatch the first three, but watch the fourth and fifth one for the first time and just get pre prepared for it. So, I don't know. We'll see. On October 18th on Netflix, we have a new series called Living With Yourself. It's starring Paul Rudd. Essentially, he's kind of this dude that's just kind of going with the flow of life, but he's just kind of like... Uh, like I said, just kind of just uh, living life and it just seems like it's a little miserable, just kind of low energy and just kind of bleh. Well, basically he ends up signing up for something and it's like, oh, you get rejuvenated. Oh, you'll be a better version of yourself. Well, it turns out he ends up finding out is it's actually a science experiment to clone people because it seems that basically a clone of himself ended up replacing him. And obviously they confront each other and it turns into this whole thing of like, wait, this guy's like a better version of me. Like he, my life is so much better. My wife, my, I think he has kids are enjoying him a lot more. So it's like, you know, I'm sure it's, it's legitimately the ultimate representation of an identity crisis. Um, but it seems a lot of fun. It's obviously, you know, it's Paul Rudd. So there is going to be some humor to it, but I think it's a very like, you know, I think if I can compare it to anything, I think we might get a little bit of a Santa Clarita diet type of vibe from it where it's like, oh yeah, there's fun. There's like some drama. Maybe it's not going to be like awesome. I, I, I don't know. I'm curious to see how far the drama go. Will it actually kind of get some like really like, oh, that's something to think about. That's some sincere thoughts. Like, is it a very existential type of show? And I mean, like I said, identity crisis wise, it seems like it might be, but I, I'm curious to see how far the show goes. I was actually kind of surprised to find that it's a show because I was like, oh, when I saw the premise at first, I was like, oh, is it a movie? It's like, no, it's a TV show, which I'm like, all right. I'm very interested to kind of ultimately see where that goes and how far they go with this whole cloning thing and just, you know, like it just, it's, there's a lot of hilarity that the trailer showed. So I'm curious, is that going to be all there is to it? Or is there going to be, you know, a bit of a darker side to it, which I mean, that might lend itself to like a darker comedy type of thing. Either way, I'm very, very interested to see what this is all about. And on October 20th on HBO, we have the series premiere of Watchmen, which I'm very interested to kind of really dive into this whole situation. Obviously, um, I'm like, I feel like I like the movie, but I feel like so much of it went over my head because I only watched it one time. I feel like if I took the time to really sit down and really just take it all in, it probably hit me very differently. Uh, this is also coming from someone who has never read the comic book or science graphic novel that's original based on which the TV show is more so pulling from the comic book than it is the movie. Because there are similar, I think it's just like some, some differences. I don't know how big and severe the differences are between the comic book and the movie, but regardless, that's something I'm going to look into. But um, just the premise of at least a little bit we've seen it's just still kind of like so much stuff out of context but the whole thing of like oh yeah you have cops having to like basically become vigilantes to kind of have to hide well they have to wear masks to hide their identities because people are coming after them because it's like oh if i know who you are i can come after you and your family and it seems like that's a particular thing that regina regina, uh, regina king's character is dealing with even to the point it seems like she goes beyond just like oh, i'm doing it like wearing a mask as a cop it seems like she goes full-blown vigilante that kind of taking justice in her own hand and like a, and that is a line from the trailer i thought was so interesting was like do you know what the difference is between a cop and a vigilante and Regina King was like no and she was like me neither so it's like that's you know and I think I, I think it's gonna be really interesting to kind of dive into this world kind of find out you know really understand you know based on how the movie ended I kind of get the feeling like uh, obviously if that played into the comic book as well like you know obviously like to really kind of understand the what the state of the world is after everything that went down in Watchmen um I'm curious, like, because I, I don't know the specific time frame of, like, how long after Watch, the events of Watchmen this is taking place. So I'm really kind of interested. Like I said, I'd probably do a little more research on my side without looking too much into it. Because I'm really kind of coming to this show not knowing anything. Because, I mean, like I said, they've done a great job with the trailers. I know there's another trailer that came out. I haven't watched it. So that probably gives a little more context to the story. But the one trailer I did watch, well, the teaser and then, like, the full trailer it still didn't tell you a lot about what's going on but still it, it seems very intriguing so I'm very interested to see what it has in store for us. On October 21st on the CW we have the third season of Black Lightning premiere which I'm very very excited about. I, I made a video uh, that went up um, last week at the time you're seeing this but um, it was uh, talk because the trailer kind of shows like 
basically people you don't want to know your secret identity that Jeff didn't want to know about his secret identity find out and what the ramifications are for that for him and Lynn I have to stress that because I in the video kept referring to her as Linda that I, I did uh, you know acknowledge that the whole mess up but obviously like free Lynn is kind of almost in a almost like police state as we can kind of see as like the ASA it seems like they've kind of really taken over you know because everything obviously is also stemming from like well the Markovian situation of like they've got like their whole army of uh, metahumans potentially and you know what that's all about obviously you know Jeff is meant to be sent in there as black lightning to kind of shake things up but it's like we see that he's kind of in prison for a while. I didn't even talk about this in the trailer, but from the trailer, but they did talk about the fact is the news is kind of spreading people thinking that Black Lightning is dead. That maybe like maybe they made a point to maybe they put his suit on display and show that it got destroyed or something. It's like, oh my god, Black Lightning's dead. Or or maybe it's just because Black Lightning hasn't showed up and everyone's just like, well, either Black Lightning's given up on us or, you know, Black Lightning is just straight up dead. So I just thought it was kind of interesting. Obviously, what this means for Nissa and Jennifer kind of being separated from their parents and just kind of living in this police state. We see how Anissa is handling it. I'm really curious to see how Jennifer handles the whole situation as well. It's just a very intriguing season. Like, and I'm sure like what we saw was probably mainly from like the beginning of the season, but you know, to kind of really see. I'm also curious to see how they structure it out. Is it going to be kind of more similar to like, because it seemed like season two was like, every like two or th like every three or so episodes you get like a new arc or is it going to be a little more consistent like season one I, I don't have a problem either way but I know some people felt like season two for some people felt a little more all over the place so I'm, I'm curious to see what you know what season three ends up being structured like so and finally on October 24th on Netflix we have a new show called Daybreak essentially it's a post-apocalyptic world but it seems more kind of like a uh, this is the end type of situation with um, the, the Seth uh, Rogen movie with like him, Jay Baruchel, Craig uh, Robinson, uh, Jonah Hill, that that whole uh, squad, and Danny McBride, uh, that whole squad, the, that whole movie. I think we're kind of getting a similar tone of that because it seems like we're dealing with like high schoolers who are dealing with the apocalypse. Now, like from the little bit I saw, I don't know if there's a full trailer out at the time we recorded this, but it was like a little bit of a teaser. It seemed like that's kind of like the tone we're kind of getting with. It's like, hey. This is how you survive the apocalypse, or at the very least, this is how you live it up during the apocalypse. So I think that's just kind of an interesting uh, premise to kind of really see, like, how, you know, because it doesn't seem like it's going to focus on adults. It seems like we're focusing 100% on teenagers. I wonder, is it just going to be like, oh, this, like, this section is theirs, the rain, you step in here, it's big trouble, so maybe there won't be any adults. What about teachers? Stuff like that. Like I said, maybe that's stuff that's probably going to be answered in a trailer that has, may already be out or maybe hasn't come out in the time of recording. Either way, it seems very interesting because I'm curious, like, is it going to be kind of a bit of a dark comedy, what that whole thing is? Either way, it seems very interesting premise. You know, I'm always kind of up to, you know, jump into a post-apocalyptic thing. And so that brings this month's watch list to an end. Like always, if there's something that's coming out that maybe I wasn't aware of that you're aware of, that you're really interested in that you think maybe me or someone else might be interested in don't be afraid to leave it in the comments down below but really that's all i want to talk about so next time you be happy be safe look like to the fullest and enjoy it good day and good bye